Hi everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a systemd timer to update IP address in IPsec for from a dynamic DNS. There's a couple of parts to this tutorial. First, I will show you how to create a service unit and then utilizing the existing script that we have. Right, if you've seen my previous tutorial, I've created a script to update the IPsec IP address from a dynamic DNS. And then we will also then go on to create a timer unit following, followed by enabling and starting the uh, services you know, using the systemd service unit. Okay, now let's hop over to my lab. Okay, so first, you can actually, there are different ways that you can create your systemd unit. Uh, you can create it in the uh, system-wide folder whereby you can use root to run the service. Or in my case, I'm going to use the, or uh, create the systemd service unit in the uh, user configuration. So first you need to do is to uh, make a directory. Okay, I've already created a directory, but the command to create a directory is pretty straightforward. You want to create a hidden config file, followed by systemd, and then user, right? Uh, I've already created that um, folder, therefore you have the error messages that the file or the folder has already exist. Okay, next, what we're going to do is to create a systemd service unit. So we'll just give it a name, update ipsec dynamic dns right you can use a meaningful name all right and then we're going to basically configure three parts of the service file right first is the unit file right usually it will consist of a couple of parameters for for this simple tutorial we're going to have a description so you know what is the service about update ipsec from dynamic dns ip address okay next we will have the service section okay by default the type is simple right there are different types you can look into those and then we want to execute the script Right, and I've already created a script. I'll show you the script later in home demo scripts update IPsec demo list, right? Dot sh. And then last but not least, you know, um, the install section, which specify things like, you know, um, whether it's a graphical target, multiple user target, etc. Right, but for our tutorial, it's pretty straightforward. We can just set it as a default target. And then you can save the configuration. Now, next, what you do is to create a timer unit. Right, uh, for easy troubleshooting and identification, you can create the same name, but just with a different extension of dot timer. Okay, similarly, there are three parts to this config, the unit part, All right? You can have a description whereby we're specifying schedule update every one minute, right? So this is going to be a scheduler for every minute similar to the cron job in the previous uh, video we're going to refuse manual start right you can specify whether you want to allow manual restart of the timer or not right so for this tutorial we're going to know we're going to not allow right so we we'll use the system timer for that right and then there'll be a timer section 
whereby we're going to say persistent is true. Right, in case the machine reboots and when it starts start up, you will um, execute the job, right? So the, you don't miss that uh, any of the updates, right? And if it's on boot, right? So when the system boot up, okay, to avoid conflict and uh, you know uh, during the initial setup, we will specify that you will start after 120 seconds after the boot and next we're gonna specify the unit will run right in terms of seconds so every second 60 seconds it will run the scheduler uh, the timer units is equal to right the target that we're going to run is ipsec dynamic dns service right so the timer will run the update ip set dynamic dns service okay and then on the install side right we're going to specify wanted by equals to timers dot target right so you can learn more about the target in the help file or you can look for it in the uh, web itself okay so that's how easy it is to just configure right uh, the service to be activated now we're gonna run this under the user account right so to do that we're gonna do system ctl minus minus user so you'll run taking the uh, variables right uh, or the um, environment variables of the current user which is our demo account right our demo user account and then we can enable update system service so we're going to enable the service first right you'll create a symbolic link and then we're going to start the service okay now before we start the service let's take a look at the script itself okay so it's in my home directory under scripts okay so we will be getting the ip address from uh, for demo.dynamic.org we will update the ipsec list and then we will output the file to uh, the temp folder right just for validation now i have not um, used a script to create a ipsec and validate if the ipsec is already list is already available uh, you can tweak your script uh, to make it you know uh, much better so that you automate some of these tasks so we will still need to go and create the list right uh, set. create the demo list in IP set okay uh, okay we need to specify the hash and IP okay so let's do a you can see that the list is created but there's no members which means that IP address has not been assigned and then if we look at our temp folder uh, the validation file right the output file has not been created okay so once this is done right just to make sure that you have created the list and uh, we don't have the text file right in the temp folder so that when we start we will see that the service will be created right so let's do a start okay you can validate the status but make sure that you have the user syntax right in front uh, right after the system command and then you can do a status update services so you can see that it's loaded right because uh this is a very different service from uh, let's say VNC or some other system D service unit that we're going to create. Uh, so it will be 
enable and it will start right uh, on system boot as well as when we uh, so to continuously run this service is inside the timer right so we should see by now right once we start the service we should see that the demo dot dynamic.org text file is being created because we have run the script once okay so we do if we do a cat just to look inside the file we'll see that the ip address for the um, dynamic dns right has been retrieved and you know entered into the text file now same thing if we go to sudo list uh, IPsec list demo list, we should see that the IP address is being added to the IPsec list. Okay. Now to make this or to schedule this service, what we're gonna do is same thing, right? Make sure that we're running it under user, enable the timer. Okay, and then start the timer. Okay, and then if we look at the status, we should see that the timer is active and persistent, right? You can see that it's loaded, the timer is there. You can see if there's any error messages, right? So this is pretty good for troubleshooting. So now if we do a tail F, my attempt just for validation uh, under uh, okay we'll see that every minute right that passes this file should be updated because we'll run the service every minute so uh, it takes about a couple of more seconds to go or right, about 20 20 seconds before the next IP address gets updated, we will let it uh, sit for a while. So just to validate that, you know, the um, file is being updated. Now fast forward this part in a short while. Okay, the tail f function doesn't seem to work on the file, but let's see. Oh, there you go. Uh, it was updated, right? Uh, my clock was a little bit off. So you can see that, you know, every minute the file is being, uh, the service is being executed and you can see that the update is there. Now what we're going to do is let me just clone this session if possible and we can see something live in action and then let's tile them side by side okay oops okay it's okay Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is to manually uh, update my demo.dynamic.org, right? So, uh, so let's do a dig plus shot. Okay, so you can see that the IP address is correct. Let me update the IP address to 10.10.10 okay so now I've uh, updated my dynamic DNS domain if I do a dig now you can see that IP address has changed okay let's wait for the next uh, schedule uh, timer 
right just to and then if you go to the view the IP set list okay you can see that it's being updated and then if I look at my demo list it should be updated to 10.10.10 .10 okay so you can see it's much easier right uh, for system D timer uh, especially when you're monitoring and troubleshooting you you it's a lot e it's a lot uh, easier for you to track the service and troubleshoot versus uh, a cron job because a cron job usually um, it's easier to configure because it's just one liner but uh, you know when it when the cron job fails it takes it takes a little bit more uh, effort to troubleshoot right so that's how easy it is to use system D uh, timer right to run uh, schedule job right very similar to how a cron job will look like okay so similarly once we've done that we can at the let's check my IP tables minus list input and see if I okay so now that we validated you know the IP set uh, update works we can then go and add minus match set minus match set demo list source minus J accept right Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry, For, always forgot the chain input. Okay. So if we do a IP table list right now, you can see that I have now added in the match set demo list as source into my IP table. Okay. So that's how easy it is to configure the uh, system D timer. You can see every every minute you know it runs right so you don't really have to set it uh to a you know to be updated every minute you can set it from from uh, hourly perspective or daily perspective right my production environment i'm tweaking it to uh probably update on a uh hourly basis right or even daily because uh it's, it's um depends on you know um how often does your dynamic DNS uh, or dynamic IP address changes. You can put it as a minute. I don't think it consumes a lot of uh, system resources. Okay, so that's all it is. Let me just uh, reverse what I have configured so that, uh, you know, I clean up my lab environment so I can just delete this. So remember, you need to delete the rules and then you can do a delete the IP set. destroy the demo list okay and then you can go on to disable right uh, so now we you can go on to disable the we can just remember the user stop update service right and you uh, update stop the timer because the services is already stopped and then if you do not want to run it anymore you can then disable the timer and then disable the service okay so this is how you configure enable start stop disable your script and the timer okay hope this tutorial has been um, useful right I will probably do a tutorial on VNC uh, as you know, a lot of time when we do remote access uh, and we want to have the graphical user interface, uh, whether you are using type VNC, XF, uh, SFCE, like DM, Genome, Desktop, etc. Uh, you know, you want to basically make sure that your graphical remote access is, start, uh, is started automatically every time it boots, right? Uh, I'll show you how to use System D to create a service for uh, type VNC as well. Okay. Thank you, take care and stay safe.